Welcome to the celebration of Holy Mass here at St. Luke Catholic Church. All peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with you. And good morning to you all, my sisters and brothers. And welcome to this celebration of the Holy Mass. On this day, we offer this Mass for our sister and mother, Geneva Baker, uh, praying for strength for her and strength for the family. We also remember our brother, Philip Faxio, as he recuperates. We gather today bringing our own personal intentions into the house of the Lord, into the presence of the Lord here in the altar. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery worthily, let us acknowledge our sins and be truly sorry for them and ask for God's peace and his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will plead for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel. The country within, the country cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says. Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be ex exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of synagogue, cinemas. The Lord took me 
from following the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say prophesy not against Israel, preach not against the house of Isaac. Now thus says the Lord, your wife shall be made a harlot in the city and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by measuring line, and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled far from its land. The word of the Lord. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true. I mean, the precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true and all of them are just. They were more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. He rose and went home. 
When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who has given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading today, my sisters and brothers, is a beautiful reading uh, from the prophecy of Amos. You see, if you read chapter 6, Amos began to prophesy against the king Jeroboam and Israel. Woe to you, Amos will say to them in chapter 6. He said, you guys think you are better off than the rest of the nations? You are cocky, you know, you don't follow the laws, you do what you want to do, and you feel the way you want to feel. You ignore the commands of the law. And so after Amos' woes and prophesying against the king and against the land for their cockiness, for their inability to follow the ways of the Lord, then the priest Amaziah went to the king and said, you know what? We got to get rid of this young prophet, Amos. He's doing bad things. He's saying things. In fact, he's prophesying that you are going to die by the sword. And so, of course, the king listened to what the priest said. And then the king told Amos, Off you go, you visionary. Away with you. Get away from here. We don't want to see you in the land of Judah anymore. And so Amos was torn because when the Lord called him as a young man who was tending sheep, when the Lord called him to become a prophet, he had this in mind. He said, you know what? I don't think I'm qualified. I don't want to go and then the Lord will not follow through with his words. And so that made Amos a little bit mad. That his own people would not even listen to his own prophecy. His own people want him dead, want him out. Isn't that what happened to Jesus in the gospel reading today? As we see Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, after he got out of the boat, he was crossing to another side. People were coming to him, just like we read in Bible study yesterday. People keep coming and flocking to him. They wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Some wanted healings. Some wanted food because they knew he was a miracle worker. He can make things happen. And so they brought him this paralytic. And he just simply said to the paralytic, take courage. Your sins are forgiven. And that got the people upset. That got the scribes, the leaders of the people, it got them upset that Jesus said, go, right? Take courage, your sins are forgiven. They began to accuse him of blasphemy. And really in the Jewish tradition, the only person who has power and authority to forgive sin is God. Anybody else who tries to forgive sins is making himself equal to God. And the Jewish people will not take it kindly to anybody who tries to make himself equal to God. They would not take it kindly with anyone. And so, they were upset with Jesus. He is blasphemy. Yesterday, in the Bible study, you know, I I talked about, in in Luke chapter 9, I talked about how there is a difference between power and authority in the Jewish world, right? And even in the Greek world. I reminded us what dunamis is. Right? It is a regular power that you, you have, the power to lift something up, a power to carry a bucket of water, the power to sweep the floor and to clean, the power to speak. But God gives more than power. God gives more than ability. God gives an unending quest. He gives us an unending authority like Jesus had when he sends us on a mission. That's why when the people heard, when Jesus confronted uh, the, the scribes, and he says, what is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or 
rise up, walk. When the people saw that Jesus had such authority, not just power, people are content with power. But every power that comes with an authority, that comes with a backing, with a mandate, that's what authority is. Every power that comes with a mandate goes a little bit further. Power on its own don't go a little further. Power on its own has its own limitations. But when your power is backed by authority from God, then you can go even further. And so when the people saw that Jesus had such tremendous authority, they were amazed. And that even endeared him to them a little bit more. And so my sisters and brothers, let us go with authority, not just simply rely on our powers and our abilities to speak, abilities to write, abilities to do things. Let's have the backing of the Lord. Just like Amos in the first reading today had the backing of the Lord to preach, to prophesy even to authorities. He had the authority of God. And because he had the authority of God, he was able to preach. And because Jesus had that authority, that mandate from God, he was able to do great things. If you and I have a backing of the Lord, if we have the authority of the Lord, we can prophesy, we can preach, we can pray, we can testify without being afraid of anyone. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us now rise as we pray. Let us pray for our senior members of our parish. Let us pray especially for those who are still recuperating. Remember Mr. Faxio, Ms. Baker, and all those who are, are still recuperating from one illness or the other. Let us pray that the good Lord will strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for our church, that we may not rely on our power alone, but we may rely on the authority given to us by God to proclaim his word to all corners of the earth and to all people, irrespective of their color, their creed, and their love. We pray to the Lord, Lord here, for all of us, that we may continue to receive the joy that comes from knowing and loving and serving God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, equity, and equality here in these United States, that people of color will continue to feel uh, courage, feel encouraged and feel empowered to voice their frustrations before the powers that be. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And for those who have died, especially Mr. Nelson, Mr. Glover, and uh, Mr. Jordan, let us pray for consolation upon their families and the strength that they need at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah. now in the silence of our hearts, let us offer our own intentions. Good and gracious God, we come before you thanking you for all you've done for us. And so we ask that you listen to the prayers that we have offered to you at this Mass, the prayers spoken out and the prayers in our heart. If it be your will, please grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. With a contrite heart and a humble spirit. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mystery, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. Could you be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins? Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles, Saint Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a bow of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our soul. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our heart. We embrace you as if you were already here and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me, his holy name. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that Bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And thank you again for joining us at this Mass, and we pray uh, that God's mercy and his peace will be upon you this day and the days to come. Uh, tomorrow is the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. Tomorrow is the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. So we are going to have Mass in the morning at 10 o'clock for those who desire to come to the church or to watch uh, via our live streaming. We will have Mass tomorrow at 10 o'clock in honor of St. Thomas the Apostle. And then in the evening, um, at tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, we'll have our regular holy hour. But today evening at 6.45 sharp, uh, we will have that mandate, that town hall. So if you haven't registered, please do so. I'm going to post uh, the information again this morning right after this Mass. Okay? God bless you and stay strong. The Lord be with you. Anyway. And now may Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be a protection against the wickedness and the snares of the enemy. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, looking for souls. Amen. And have a good day.